Okay, let's get started here. So, is all the homework turned in? Here's the setup. They said in 1970 the population was 3,562, and in 2000, 9,765. So, they want us to find an exponential that models the town's to find an exponential function that models the town's population as a function of the number of years since 1970. So what will our input value be in the function, you guys? What will the what will the input for the function be when the population is 3562? Will the input be 1970? It'll be one or zero. Number of years since 1970 would be zero. Okay. So then the time for 9765 would be, you guys. 30. 30. Okay, so here's our basic in given information, and we want to write the function p of t. Good review problem from this unit. So, what's our basic exponential form for a b to the t? So they're not saying anything about continuous rate, so we'll just go with the old school form. So we got to get these three values, or these two values, a and b. A is always your initial amount, or corresponding to input equal to what input gives us the initial amount? Zero. Okay, so that's what we got, and this will be to the t. So the, then the question is, what is b? It is nine thousand seven hundred sixty-five divided by three thousand five hundred sixty-two raised to the one thirty. Okay, so. Um, What's the meaning of b? So what is the? We also know what the meaning of b is. Let's start with that. You're right. What's that? It's the growth factor for what time period? One year growth factor. Whatever you're raising to the t is going to be the growth factor for one unit of t. Okay. So what growth factor can we get very easily from the given information? Can we get the one year quickly? What can we get? The thirty year. We can get the multiplier. This multiplier right here, that you would multiply by 3562 to get 9765, would be the 30 year. So what number is that? What, how would you get that multiplier? 9765 divided by. That would be that ratio would be the number that you would multiply by to get the population 30 years later. So let's get that number. Two point seven four one. Yeah. So let's go with two. Yeah, let's go with two point seven four one. Okay. So that's the thirty-year growth factor. What do we need for B? The one-year growth factor. So this is going back a couple weeks now. So we got to know it. The test is next week, right? The test is next week. So if we got the thirty-year growth factor, how do we get the one-year? We're going to take it to the power of one thirtieth, and we've many times <coughs> we've shown where that comes from. You should know how to get that. So let's get a, a decimal approximation for that. So so we know this right here goes in there. That's our one year growth factor. So it's going to go in there. Let's get a decimal approximation. One point zero three four two. Four two. Okay, so then it asks, what's the annual percent change? What's the annual percent change? 
We like growth because you can just see it by looking at the growth factor. You can just call it out. Decay a little bit tougher, right? So 3.42% increase every year. All right. What's the percent increase every 30 years? That's a little bit trickier. So if the growth factor is 2.741, what's the 30-year <coughs> percent increase? Oh, nice. Okay, so yeah, it's 174%. Do you see that? Because it's going to be, you're going to subtract what you had the previous year, which was re represented by 1. So this is how much you increase. That's 174%. So the 30-year percent increase is 174%. Why? Because you subtract 1, just like we did here. You subtracted 1, and then you multiplied by 100. Okay, let's see. Use your function to predict the amount of population in 2019. Okay, that's pretty easy. T would be in 2019? 49. So it's, you're just finding P of 49, right? The population in year 49. Piece of cake. All right? D. When will the population reach 40,000 people? So that's saying... The output is 40,000. What's the corresponding input? So we need to solve for t. First step in solving for t? Divide. Tell me what that ratio is, 40,000 over 3562. Is that a good approximation? Yeah. And that equals 1.0342 to the t. We've got to solve for the exponent. What exponent is it? It's the exponent of 1.0342 that gives 11.23. Again, it's the exponent of this number, 1.0342, that gives 11.243. Written as a log, that is? Exponent of 1.0342 of equals that's going to be the time that it would reach 40,000 if, if it continued at this, at this type of growth. Okay? And then to get an approximation for that, so take your pick natural log or log base 10. You're going to use the change of base formula. So you could do log of 11.23 or natural log, as long as you keep them the same. So now you can get a decimal approximation in your calculator. 3-3? Three, 3-4 three? Three, years. So what year is that? In the year 2042. After how many years from any reference will the population triple? Are we good on A through D? Okay, so how long will it take this population to triple? So tripling, that relates to what? Like what kind of thing? Okay, by what? By three. So what we're really saying is, When is the growth factor going to be equal to 3? So yeah, so we could do, when are, when are we 3 times some, <coughs> some initial amount? For what, we're, we're saying, we're really saying, for what time period does that multiplier become 3, right? The multiplier needs to be a tripling multiplier. So it's going to be t is going to equal, t is the exponent of 1.0342 of 3.
Yeah, so we're saying when does this multiplier right here have the effect of tripling? For what value of t does that give 3? So that's the log base 1.0342 of 3. Questions on 73? Does it help? Yes. Okay, how would we get this as continuous? How could we rewrite this function as continuous growth? What we need to do, so where's our function? It's over here, so it's getting kind of messy. So if this is our function over here, here's our function, p of t equals, how would we change that into uh, a form with continuous growth? So it'd be the same, the population would be growing exactly the same way, we are just writing this, the, the growth <coughs> in a different form, how would we get it as continuous growth? So we'd have to find this value of k. Oh, it's b equals e to the k. Right. So this, what's inside the parentheses here is our b, and that equals e to the k. So remember, so this is, this is what you've got to keep practicing. b is not a rate. It's a what? Growth factor. k <coughs> is the rate. Is it the true rate of increase every year? No, it's the continuous rate. So this continuous rate will be greater or less than 3.42. Less, because a continuous rate combined with continuous growth results in the true increase of 3.42. So that will be a little bit less than 3.42 when you solve using a log. Okay, so you solve that using a log, and that will be that you should expect a number a little bit less than 0.0342. Because when you combine it with continuous growth, it results in a true increase of 3.42 percent. All right, are we good on 73? Does it make sense? Clear up your questions. You just <coughs> Number two. Okay, so now we're given graphs. Um, let's do, I'm going to do the last one first. Is that okay? That sounds great. Perfect. How did I do? Fabulous. Okay, so there's really kind of what? One, two. There's kind of like five parts to this bottle. Do you see? What's happening in each part of the bottle? What kind of covariation do we have in each part of the bottle? A different. But no, in, in a particular part of the bottle, what kind of covariation do we have? Not quite. You're on the right track. What kind of? Rate of change do we have in each part of the bottle? Constant rate of change. Constant rate of change in each part. So what does a constant rate of change mean? It means for every little amount of water that I add? Your water's going to increase in OK. <coughs> so let's just look at section one. So I'm going to keep adding equal amounts. And what happens to the change in height? First of all, what does the height do every time I add this little amount of water? It increases. Now, how does each change in height compare to the previous? It increases the same amount as the previous. So what would the bottle have to be like so that every time I pour the same amount of water in, I get the same increase in height? Yeah, right, OK. So in, in one, I'm going to have some And then we go to the second part of the bottle. Does it have constant rate of change? Yes. 
It does. If I put the same amounts of water in, one step at one amount at a time, how do those changes, which are all the same, how do they compare to the previous changes that were all the same? Do we get greater changes or lesser changes than in the first part of the bottle? Greater changes. So what does the bottle have to be like there? So does it, does it gradually get skinnier or does it abruptly get skinnier? Abruptly, the bottle is going to get narrower because abruptly <coughs> those changes decrease but then stay constant. Does it make sense? So what about the next part of the bottle? Right here, there's going to be an, another abrupt change. It's going to be thinner. Okay, then what about the fourth part of the bottle? Abruptly or, or gradually? Abruptly, it's going to get wider. And then finally, one more time. Okay? So that's what's happening. To have a constant rate of change of height versus amount of water, you're going to have the sides the same. But then suddenly the constant rate, say, increases. Yeah, it's kind of like a, uh, yeah. a cornered, a cornered yeah. hourglass, OK? Cornered hourglass. Or it's like a weight. <laughs> OK, so let's look at, um, let's look at number two. Am I good at number four? So when there's a change, so let's talk about this here. Number two looks like this. How many parts of the bottle are there this time? Two, three. Not quite. It looks kind of like three to me. So let's just talk about what's happening in the first part of the bottle. So I'm going to put in a little amount of water. What will happen? The height will increase a certain amount. Okay. Then I'm going to put the same amount of little amount of water in. It will increase. How will that increase compare to the previous increase? Less or more of an increase? Less of an increase. I'm going to put the same amount of water in again. The next increase, more or less than the previous increase? Less. So what does the bottle need to be like so that with each amount of water, the increase in height is a little bit less than the previous one? Is it getting wider or narrower? Let's think about it. So let's just try Let's try wider. So wider would mean as I add the same amount of water, the amount the height would go up would be less, less than before or greater than before? Less. less than before. So wider, this is getting wider. Okay? And then starting here. But our increases are getting bigger, right? What's that? Our increases in height are getting larger. So wouldn't our bottle go? No, I think we, we just stepped it out that each increase is less than the one before, right? This is showing that each increase is less than the one before. You see that? So here's your first increase right there. <coughs> next one's a little bit less. Next one's a little bit less. Next increase a little bit less. Okay, in section two, what will characterize the shape of the bottle? Constant rate of change. Is there an abrupt change in the... No. No. So we're just here, and it's just going to go up from there. I'll make this one look. OK. And then starting in section three, each height, each change in height for the same amount of water added is how what compared to the previous? The changes are increasing. So if the changes or the, the little changes in height are increasing, what does the bottle have to look like? It's getting narrower. Okay. 
Okay, so the name of the game here is not to, you don't rush to judgment. Don't go for the jugular right at the beginning. Do it one equal small amount at a time on your x-axis. And think about what is the current change in y, how does it compare to the previous. And do that over and over again. It takes discipline because you, the, the great temptation will be to, to do that one time and then just think, oh, I know what this is, and then try to draw it. And then that will lead to error. And, okay? And confusion. So... Take my advice. Go one, and we'll do it on the next one. You'll see it on the next one how, it's hel how helpful it is. One equal small <laughs> step at a time in your independent variable, comparing the resulting changes in y to the previous. Questions on this one? All right, so let's do the skateboarder. So... You have to really attend to what are the what is our independent variable? So what are we going to take little changes of? Is it time? Okay, we can handle that. What is our dependent variable? So what's the other quantity we're looking at? Horizontal. Horizontal distance. Okay, so if you do not take my advice, chances are this is what your graph will look like. Oh, okay, well, he's here, right? And then he's going to go down and then across and then back up and then down and across and back up. And I got it, and I'm done. And then down and across and back up. <coughs> my homework was so easy. I just got it done, Ooh. right? But this is... But if we do it correctly, actually, the, the true graph is actually very different from this. That's why we've got to think of it one step at a time. So we take a little bit of little bit of change in time. So let's just talk about at time equals zero. What's this horizontal distance from the starting point at time equals zero? It's zero. So actually, the graph starts here. Okay, doesn't start up high because we're talking about horizontal distance. He's zero horizontal distance from that starting point. So a little bit of time later, what happens to his horizontal distance? He's a little bit away. Okay, it will increase. Does it increase a lot or a little bit? The horizontal distance. He's going almost straight down at the beginning, so his horizontal distance only increases a little bit. So maybe like this much. Okay, in the next equal amount of time, his horizontal distance will change, increase. He's moving to the right. Will it increase more or less than the previous? More. more. <coughs> so here's the first change. Right there. Here's the second change, which is more than the first. All right, and so maybe he's almost to the bottom of the ramp, and we take a little bit more time, same equal amount. <coughs> what will happen to his horizontal distance, increase or decrease? Increase. More or less than the previous? A little bit more. Why? Because as he goes down, now that the ramp starts to curve, so it's, it's shooting him out to the right more than it did at the beginning. At the beginning, it only shoots him out a little bit, but as time goes by, now it's actually pushing him out to the right. <coughs> so with each time increment, we get more of a horizontal move than before. So what will that graph look like? Just that part of it. Straight line? No, curved. curved up or curved down? Curved up. curved up. This is called concave up. Concave up is when the increases are doing what? The increases in Y are increasing or decreasing? 
increasing. So those little changes, so I should say changes in y, sorry. Changes in y are increasing. Okay, so now we've just reached the horizontal part on the bottom. So the next little amount of time, what will the, what will the change be? Yeah, so, across, so for these little amounts of time across the bottom, can you imagine that he's going to be going at a constant rate across there, right? So as he goes horizontally, he's going at a constant rate. So that means for every equal amount of time, what is his um, increase or change to the right compared to the last one? The same. So they, they'll all be about the same amount, maybe the same amount that from the last right there at the bottom. So... We'll have a change like that much, and then these are all the same, the changes in Y, all the same. <coughs> Get track here. Boom. One more. So, so these changes are increasing, and so we get the, gr the graph is curved up, concave up. These changes are same, so the graph is? Straight line. That's when he's going across the bottom of the ramp. So curved up. And then straight. Okay, now he's hitting the, the upslope on the backside. So when he first starts going up, how will the next change in horizontal distance compare to the last? Greater, the same, or less? A little bit less. Okay, then for the next equal amount of time. Yeah, so now his motion is getting turned more vertically and less horizontally. So for, for every change in time, that amount that he goes to the right is a little bit less and less until he's basically at the top. So what are happening to the changes now? They're decreasing the changes. What about his distance from... What about his horizontal distance? Is that increasing or decreasing? Increasing. The horizontal distance itself, the y value is increasing, <laughs> but the changes are decreasing. And so the, 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 cur the graph is curved down. It's called concave down. So concave down is when changes are changes are Changes in Y are decreasing. Okay, so here's where it gets tricky on the way back. This is going to be counterintuitive, okay? But stay with me. So now he's going to start going back. The first, the first change back towards, or the first decrease towards the starting point, great or small? Small, okay? The next decrease, right? He's going back towards the starting point. Bigger or smaller than that one? A little bit bigger. Next one, a little bit bigger. So what's happening? So, yeah, so it's, okay, careful. So the changes, <coughs> Are the changes <coughs> positive or negative? Changes are negative. Y value is decreasing. Okay, don't miss this. This is very confusing for students, okay? So we'll go over it, but so the changes are negative. Y is decreasing. We're going down here. So suppose these values were A change of negative 1, a change of negative 2, a change of negative 3, and a change of negative 4. Okay, we'll just model it that way. Is it fair? So say his distance from that starting point, it reduces by 1, then it reduces by 2, then it reduces by 3, then it reduces by 4. So are those changes, are those decreasing or increasing? Are they decreasing or increasing? Here's the list of numbers. Negative 1, 
negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. Is that a list of decreasing values or increasing values? Decreasing. Now, the amount of change, what about the amount of change? That's increasing. But just the changes themselves are decreasing because what? They're becoming more negative. So the changes are becoming more negative. This is the key. Changes are becoming more negative. Which is, the changes are which? Increasing or decreasing? A list of, of numbers that's becoming more negative, is it an increasing or decreasing sequence? Decreasing. decreasing. This is very hard for students. Here's the key. Start by saying, are they becoming more negative or less negative? If they're becoming more negative, which would they are? Then more negative values are, is a decreasing sequence. Why is it hard? Because the actual amounts of change are increasing. This is an amount of change of 1, an amount of change of 2, an amount of change of 3 and 4. So it looks like, but because they're negative changes, becoming more negative is decreasing. And so what happens is the reason we want to be very uh, specific about that I really, I really wanted this to be down here. There we go. Why? Because what's the shape of the graph? Concave up or concave down? Concave. Still concave down. And we said <coughs> concave down is associated with changes in y are decreasing. That's when you get concave down. So they're decreasing y. Less positive. Changes are becoming less positive through there. And then what about through here? More negative. That's always more negative or less positive means decrease. That's why the graph is concave down through that whole part. Less positive, more negative, which means concave down, which means the changes are decreasing. Okay, then through the heading back through the, the horizontal section, constant rate of change. Oh, that's, that was a bad line. Try that again. Constant rate of change, like this. That's supposed to be constant. Okay, just pretend. Then, what happens to, so we've got these changes here. Same amount of time, same change. Same amount of time, same change. Same amount of time, same change. Constant rate of change. Now the next, he starts hitting the upslope. So in the next equal amount of time, will the change be more or less than the previous? Less in magnitude, but what? So if this was negative 4, say, then this is like negative 3. Okay, then in the next equal amount of time, it's going to be... Is this, so here's the trick. Is this a greater change or a lesser change than the previous? It's a greater change because it's a less of a negative number. So through here, the changes are becoming what? They're becoming, <coughs> changes are becoming less, less negative. So is that increasing or decreasing changes? So here's the sequence, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. Is that a set of increasing numbers or decreasing? Increasing. Increasing or decreasing? Changes are increasing. 
because they're becoming less negative. <laughs> but many of you just won't believe me. You'll fight me on this. Okay? But the key is that the, if, if numbers become less negative, if the changes are negative, but smaller and smaller negative, that means that those numbers are increasing. And why do we want that? Because what's the shape of the graph? Concave up. Changes are, look, concave up means changes are increasing. Changes in Y are increasing. Okay. Does it make sense? Yes, please. Yeah, if he makes it all the way to the starting point, then his horizontal distance would be what? If he makes it all the way back up, then his the horizontal distance would be back to zero. And then he'd start over again. And it would just, it would be cyclical, yeah. So notice, it's, this graph is nothing like the shape of his route. It's nothing like, why? Because we're, we're measuring horizontal distance. And the shape of this route is more kind of like looking at both horizontal and vertical distance together. So if you're looking at horizontal distance versus time, you don't get anything that looks like, you know, his trip, right? His trip. That's why it's, it's important, really important, that you use this technique. So what do you do? You take small, equal changes in the, <coughs> the horizontal quantity, time, and then compare changes, resulting changes in your y coordinate. But when that graph is decreasing, that's when it gets tricky. And hopefully that that helped. If you got it, we've got to <coughs> practice that. We got, and we'll have chances to practice that. Okay. Questions on this? How? I mean, when asked to describe it. Describe what? I mean, it just. In some of them, they were like, describe the graph and describe the, the vary, how the, they vary together. What is the... Yeah, so it's kind of like what we've been doing. So in this first part of the graph, is, is the horizontal distance increasing or decreasing? So you would say, horizontal distance is increasing. Changes in horizontal distance are doing what in this first part? Also increasing. So we've got horizontal distance increasing and the changes are increasing. And then the next part, <clears throat> horizontal distance is increasing, changes are staying constant. Yeah, so always talk about just what is the y value itself doing? And then changes in the y value. Yep, if you can, if you can correctly describe those two things simultaneously, what the y value is doing and changes in the y value, You've got a really good grasp of the covariation, right? The covariation, how they're changing together. Okay. So maybe we should. Um. Let's do a little practice exercise here. So uh, let's say, okay, I'll just leave that there. <coughs> so here's your two variables. Your input variable is going to be time. So your x, your uh, the, the independent variable is going to be time, and then the dependent variable is going to be my distance from that chair. Okay, my distance from that chair. Okay. So I, when I say go, that's going to be time equals zero, and I'm going to I'm going to walk up here. I'm going to walk up here, and um, you're going to be mentally coming up with as time goes by, how does my distance from that chair change? Okay. So let me think about this here. All right. Are you ready? Here is your teacher walking. Okay. 
Ready, go. starts now. <laughs> you should pod because you're bored. <laughs> it's not that fun. Okay, one more time. <laughs> Ready? Here we go. You're just Time starts now. This is from that chair. This is from that chair. Time starts now. Did I do it the same time the last three times? Same way? Kind of. You ran in the first two. Well, okay. Same idea. Okay, so <laughs> I'm glad that's not on video. The, the visual. Who says it's not? Okay, so see if you can do it. So this is time, and this is distance from the chair. So let's just talk it through. I started here. What did I do as I went that way? You increased. Increased speed, right? I went, started slow and I got faster, right? And then when I turned the corner, I was fast and I did what? Slow down. And then constant. And then I slowed back up, okay? So speeding up that way and then slowing down and then speeding up. So that's just the general idea. So what will that graph look like of distance from the chair versus time? Okay, she says, <coughs> does it start up on the y-axis because I'm starting here? Yes. yes. Okay, mm -hmm. so like up here? No, I can up middle. I can okay. Up okay, go for it. What's that? No. At time equals zero, what's my distance from the chair? Zero? Okay. See if you can do it. So again, this is not about, it takes, takes a little bit of time. It's not about, oh, I can just draw it, right? It's about what? Small equal amounts of time. And how the changes in my distance compare to the previous changes. So let's say at this time here, I got, this was when I was furthest from the chair. And this is where I was <laughs> when I started. Okay, throughout this first part. So, as equal small amounts of time go by, what happens is my distance from the chair? Did it increase or decrease? Distance increased. Distance increased. What about, so distance increased. What about changes in the distance? They also increased. They also increased. So with each equal amount of time, when I draw that stair step, does that make sense what that means? Yeah. This is my equal change in time, and then this is the resulting change. So with each change in time. So concave up or concave down? Changes are increasing. So I get to this furthest point. 
What happened when I turned around? At first. So am I, is my distance decreasing or increasing? Decreasing. Does it decrease a lot at first or just a little? A lot, okay? So for, that, for the next change in time, I suddenly have this. And then, okay, here's the question. What happened to my changes in distance? Are they increasing or decreasing? Are the changes increasing or decreasing as I move toward the chair? Suppose this is negative 10, something centimeters. Then negative 8, negative 7. Okay, please don't, can you, can you just hold on one minute? Really important, because you think you got it, but you don't. Are the changes increasing or decreasing? These are increasing changes. Why are they increasing? Less negative. <coughs> the changes are negative, but they're getting less negative. There'll probably be about 40% success, maybe less, on this question on the test. Don't be a casualty, okay? Changes are, the, the amount of change is decreasing, but because the changes are negative changes. So it's increasing and decreasing. Don't try to, don't, those phrases are just confusing. Just forget those phrases, okay? Um, the distance is decreasing and so therefore the changes are negative. The changes are negative. But the changes are becoming less negative, so the changes are increasing. Okay, so now what happens now? Now the changes become, so this is not true anymore. So now the changes, are they negative or positive? <coughs> They're negative when I speed up, right? I'm speeding up back towards the chair. The changes are negative. Are they becoming more negative or less negative? More negative. They're larger negative changes. They're larger negative changes. Therefore, are the changes decreasing or increasing? Decreasing. Changes here are decreasing. You got to practice this. It's not natural. Watch the video. See you Friday. slowing down, then changes are negative, but they're becoming less negative. So I'm slowing down, I'm moving towards the chair, but I'm slowing down. So my changes are becoming less negative. So the changes are increasing. So my changes in distance from the chair right now are increasing. This is becoming less negative. If I do this, my changes in distance from the chair are becoming more negative. So therefore, decreasing or increasing? 
More negative or decreasing? Decreasing. More negative is decreasing, like this. More negative is like negative 1, negative 3, negative 7, negative 10. More negative, right? That's, yeah, that's, decreasing. that's decreasing. Do you see? Those are decreasing values. All right. Uh, thank you. Keep practicing. It's, okay. it's tough.